here. Alright, so Exodus chapter 12 and verse <clears throat> 1 and 2. Declare, number one, first verse, declare that it is the Lord who is speaking. Number two, it declares that the Lord was speaking to Moses and Aaron. Number three, Aaron was the mouthpiece of Moses. Uh, therefore, Moses felt that he was not able to speak as uh, fluently as he would want to. And therefore, God gave him his brother Aaron to be the mouthpiece. Now, number four, the Lord designated the month that the Passover would be killed or kept. And it would be the first month, not the first month of the Roman year, but the first month of the biblical year. And we need to note that the biblical year or the biblical month is usually from new moon to new moon. The month which the Lord God designates as uh, his timepiece for us, for us to keep track of time, is from one new moon to another new moon, no matter how many days it takes. And that's the, the designation of the biblical month. So the first month would be Abib, because now the month begins to take on names. And as the month was named, it was named Abib, which is a Hebrew name for the first month. Nisan, many of you know it as today, would be the Babylonian name given to the first month. So now we move on. And the Lord said, Spake you unto all the congregation of Israel. What must you say unto them? You must say to them in the tenth day, of this month the first month so in the tenth day of the first month they shall take to them every man a lamb so now it is told exactly what they should do they must take a lamb every man when should they take it on the tenth day of which month the first month okay and so take to you every man a lamb according to the household of your fathers all right according to what the house of your father a lamb for an house so a lamb must be for an house one house no matter how many people are in the house you must have one lamb for that house now this uh command the instructions are specific and plain that is not hard that is not difficult to understand. Now, the next thing we need to note, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the next thing we need to know that many people might be asking a, a question now, um, what kind of lamb should it be? How old the lamb should be? And so forth. All right, so let's read on some more. And, and, and the Bible says that if your household is too small for the lamb, which means it might be just a male and female or a husband and wife it might be a mother and father and one child it might be a mother father and two child or two children all right now let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls so now it will be according to the number of the souls according to the amount of people in house number one who has the lamb and house number two that you're going to share it with. Your house might only have three people. Your neighbor house might have another three people or maybe two people. So you want to share with them. <clears throat> so that's what we call love. This is now God is showing and teaching the children of Israel how to love their neighbors. We are, it, we are studying the passover and its transition we are now in exodus chapter 12 exodus 12 we are at verse 4 we are in exodus chapter 12 and we are at verse 4 now we see where the la where the lord gave them that specific instruction so that the instruction is specific the instruction is direct the instruction is plain are oh, you seeing that all right let me put I'm going to put the um, the session in 
question and answer and if you need to ask a question you just simply press star six to unmute yourself and ask a question so i'm going to put the program um, or, or the worship session in question and answer you will hear my voice but again if you need to talk you will have to press star six and um speak and i will give you that permission to do so all right the conference is now in question and answer mode all right so if anyone comes on after uh missionary sterling your line would be automatic their line would be automatically muted but as for each and every one of you now you can hear my voice but i cannot hear you right now until unless you unmute your phone so if you're at a place where it's very quiet and you can unmute your phone and we can reason together that's fine but you got to keep in mind that you cannot just um, speak out and interrupt without asking um, permission that you may speak or say something or if you have a question to ask you might want to say pastor can i ask a question so we want to do this um, as orderly and as respectful as possible now we are at verse 4 where the where the lord instruct moses to tell the people of israel that they must take the lamb according to the feeding or the mouth in their home and if the lamb is too big for their home th then um they can share it with their neighbor um so as we move right along in verse 5 it begins to tell you how the lamb should be so that's going to answer the question for those who are wondering what kind of lamb should we take should we take a grown lamb should we take a little lamb should we take a lamb that is with child should we take a lamb <clears throat> that is a, uh, of a, a, a male or female all of these questions people might have now here the bible says that your lamb shall be without blemish and so the bible says a lamb without what blemish meaning that the lamb must not number one be sick Number one, it must not be um, it must not be in a process where you are nursing a sickness. <clears throat> number two, number two, right? The lamb must not be sick. In other words, the lamb must not be in um, in a position where it is damaged. It is suffering from any kind of ailment. It must not be a lamb that. Uh, you are nurturing or nursing to health. This lamb must be uh, un must be without blemish. This lamb must not be a mixed lamb. In other words, if you are uh, engaging in cross breeding the the lamb, that lamb cannot be a cross bred lamb. It must be without blemish. And what kind of lamb? A male lamb and a male lamb of the first year. The lamb must not be older than one year. So the Lord is giving specific instructions here. The lamb must be without blemish, number one, not sick. Number two, it must be a, a male lamb, no older than one year. And you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. And number two, it must be now separated from the sheep or from the goat. So now... Um, the lamb must not be mixed up with the other sheep and it must not be mixed up with the goat and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month <clears throat> so now you're going to take the lamb from the 10th day and you're going to keep the lamb until the 14th day of the month which means that you're going to keep that lamb for another four days you're going to keep that lamb for another four days. So now, in my understanding earlier in my years, <clears throat> I would think that the lamb would be taken out and would be kept for 14 days. But no, that's not correct. The lamb must be selected on the 10th day according to verse 3. So the lamb would be selected on what? The 10th day, and then it would be kept until the 14th day of the month. 
which will be another four days, which will give you 14 days total. All right. What else the Bible said that we should do? And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. This lamb must be killed in the evening. How could that be, Lord? It is like we don't have much light in the evening. And we don't have time to clean it up. We don't have time when we kill the lamb really to clean it up and to prepare it. To remove the guts, to remove and drain the blood and all of that. We don't have much time to do that, Lord. So how are you telling us to do it in the evening? Well, most time when you will do butchering, you will do the butchering in the morning. But here the Lord is saying that this lamb that you have taken on the 10th day, keep it for another four days separated from the other animals. <clears throat> you are now to kill it in the evening. And so verse 7 says, And they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorposts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. So now the Lord is giving you more instructions of what to do. And it's for you to do these instructions or follow these instructions in obedience. We have to then follow these instructions in obedience. We cannot stray. We cannot take a shortcut. Now, the Lord says that you are to take the blood and you are to put it on two sides, uh, two side posts, and on the upper of the door wherein you shall eat the lamb. So you're going to eat this lamb inside your house, inside your home, inside your place of abode, not outdoor. This is going to be done where? Inside and not outside. Now, verse 8 says, And they shall eat the flesh in the night. You shall eat it when? In the night. Roast with fire. How will this lamb be eaten? Roast. You have to roast it, not boil it, not steam it not cook it and season it it has to be rose with fire and then unleavened bread and with bitter herb they shall eat it so now they shall eat it with unleavened bread what is unleavened bread unleavened bread now represents bread without yeast bread without the salt and all the flavors the bread must simply be of uh, the wheat or the flour without any salt and pepper and yeast and spice and all of that. So it, be, so it is unleavened. And with bitter herbs, and they shall eat it with bitter herbs. Right? Okay, so now we move on uh, to verse 9 a little bit. Um, eat not of it raw nor shodden at all with water, but rose with fire, his head, his legs, and with the pertinence thereof, meaning that with all the intestines, all of the uh, inside of the lamb must not be removed, but it must be uh, roasted as is. All right? And that's the instructions of the Lord. All right. So you're not to eat of it raw or half cook. It's not going to be half cooked sudden, quickly, or half cook. But you must keep everything together. And he shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. The Bible is instructing us. The Lord is instructing Moses and, and mouthpiece Aaron telling the people, you shall not, okay, leave any of it until the morning. However, that which remaineth, if you cannot 
consume all of it, that which is remaining, you must then burn the rest of it with fire. <clears throat> in other words, put it in the fire and burn it down to a state of uneatable where it is uh, become as charcoal or become burned enough that you cannot consume it and nothing else can consume it. So you're going to burn the rest of it with fire. No birds can come and take of it in the morning. No animal can come and take of it in the night when you go to sleep because it's then burned and it is only for you and for you to use and to eat in the manner in which I'm instructing you. Now the Bible also tells us that in verse 11 how they should do this. The, the state of the people. First, the Bible tells us about the state of the, the lamb. Before it tells us about the state of the lamb, it tells us when, when it shall be killed. <clears throat> it told us when it shall be taken and separated. It told us the month. It told us the day. And it told us the time in the evening. And then it tells us how the lamb must be shared. It also tells us now how the lamb must be roasted. And now it is telling us how the people should be. And you, the people, after you let nothing remain it, then you burn all of it. The Bible is saying that you now have to be ready to eat this lamb. And verse 11 tells us that you shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet. With your staff in your hands, for those who have staff. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the, the Lord's Passover. So you are, have to eat it in haste. <coughs> with your, uh, with your, your, your shoes on your feet. Your staff in your hand. And with your loins girded. With your clothes on, with your belt around your waist, your lines girded. And that is for you. Verse 12 now instructs us for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods. Of, the, of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord so the Lord is telling you the reason why he is asking you to do all of this it says that he will pass through the land of Egypt this night so the question is is it the Lord personally himself is going to pass through the land is it the Lord himself personally going to come down from where he is, from his throne, and pass through Egypt? Well, that's a question to be answered in a little while. So now the Lord, when he says he's going to pass through, what is it that he means? Is it he himself going to personally pass through Egypt? And smite all the firstborn of Egypt? Or is it he, God, going to allow an angel to pass through Egypt and do all this damage? And so the Lord said unto the children of Israel that the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are in. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. 
So now the Lord is telling you that, listen, the blood that you have placed upon the doorposts and upon the sides of the windows, or the two sides of the, uh, uh, of the, the door and the, the windows and so forth, that wherever that blood is, that blood is a sign for the angel that's coming with the plague, that that angel with the plague would not unleash damage on your home and destroy whoever is within that home. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, very key word right there, memorial. Underline that word, write that word down, keep that word with you. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And now we need to also underline and mark that word, ordinance, and we are all to also mark that word forever. Because these words are used, and if you try to hold on to these words without understanding these words in context, then you are going to get confused with the word of God. So number one, what is a memorial? And many of you would say, yes, it's like a birthday, that every year you would have a birthday. A memorial is like when someone die and each year you memorize their death. You talk about them. You have a, 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 an event to bring to memory the person, the individual that has passed on who you love so much. So a memorial is something that we normally do on a year to year basis. A memorial is not something that you would normally do on a month-to-month -month basis. A memorial is not something that you will do on a bi-weekly basis. A memorial is not something that you will do on a weekly basis. A memorial would not be something that you'll do on a quarterly basis. Of a truth, can it be done more often than one year? Can a memorial be done more often than one year? Because a memorial really su suggests a yearly uh, commemoration. A memorial suggests something that is done on a yearly basis. Unless if somebody be so kind, I don't know if you can, maybe you can look up the word memorial and read it for us or i don't know if you are at that liberty to do so uh you can you know find that word memorial and if you think that i'm not accurate enough then maybe you want to come with the meaning of a memorial but i'm quite sure that i'm accurate enough now, the question is, can a memorial be done on a weekly basis? That would be the, the, the next, uh, that would be, um, what is it, uh, a good question to ask. Can a memorial be, be done um, on a weekly basis? Can a memorial be done monthly? Like some people, when they get married, they, they mark the anniversary of their marriage by on a monthly basis they say honey this is the first month since we have been uh, married um sometimes they want to mark it on a uh year you know weekly basis honey it's one week now since we are married it's two weeks now since we are married and we look at that as a as a uh anniversary but a memorial what really is a memorial so a memorial uh, uh, is, is a noun 
And according to the dictionary, it is something, especially a structure of something or, or something that is established to remind people of a person. It might be an event. Uh, it could be even be a moment. Uh, 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 they can even build a monument as a memorial for something. So now what we are looking at is something that is done on a basis to, to bring back to memory certain events or certain things that have taken place. By right, we have to question now, can a memorial then be done um, more, more often than just on a yearly basis? Um, if you have a comment, please press star six and unmute your, your mic and you can and, and share what you, you think a memorial really is. Can it really be done more than one year? Or is it that a memorial is simply uh, something that is done on a yearly basis? All right, once again, you just simply press star six one time and wait, and your mic will be open. But anyway, all right. So uh, a memorial is usually something that we do to, um, you know, preserve the remembrance of something, of someone, some event, and so forth. Um, it can be done uh, at a particular time that you have set to do it however the lord here has set the time for the passover and the time the lord god says would be the first month so because the lord god has said it would be done in the first month how often does the first month comes how often does the first month come within a calendar year the first month only comes once a year once a year the first month of a given calendar only comes once a year therefore the conclusion the fact of the matter is that this passover would be done and can only be done once a year not weekly not bi-weekly not monthly not every other month not quarterly the passover would only be done once a year because the first month only comes once a year therefore this memorial would be done once a year each time that they do it as often as they do it it would be done once a year how often would they do it once a year as often as they do it which is once a year they will do it in remembrance of how the lord delivered them from egypt and so that's the passover now how has the passover transition into what we do today so now that we see here where the Passover represents something. The Passover represents something. The Passover number one represents life. The Passover number two represents deliverance. The Passover number three represents memory. Okay? Remembrance. All right? So there we have the significance of the Passover. Now, when it comes to the blood of Jesus Christ, the Passover lambs, the Passover lambs blood represents the blood of Jesus Christ, represents the blood of Jesus Christ in terms of covering, in terms of protection, and in terms of life. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. You are protected to live. You are protected to have life. You are protected 
to live on. You are protected from the danger that is around you. And so the blood of Jesus Christ covers us today, just like the blood of the lamb, literally on the post of the door and on the windows, protected the children of Israel back then while they were in Egypt. Now, when we read verse uh, 14, uh, let's go to verse 12 first. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. He declare who he is. It is the Lord who is going to do this. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a, what? a memorial. And he shall keep it. A feast to the Lord throughout your generation. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So now we spoke about memorial. But now we need to look at what is it, what it means by feast. You must keep it as a feast. In other words, a feast means that there are going to be things on a table that you will eat. And so the Passover lamb would be on the table as the meat that the children of Israel would eat. On the table also there would be bitter herbs, of which the Bible said that they must have bitter herbs. Also on the table there would be unleavened bread, bread that is without yeast, bread that is not filled with uh, tasty stuff. The bread will not rise when you bake it. It is without leaven. It is without anything in it. So it would be unleavened bread. So those would be on the table and you would feast of that. So feast means it's a time of eating. It's a time where they will come together to eat. Now the question would be asked, Pastor, is there anything else that can be on the table? Well, Listen, should you have fruits on the table? Can you have rice on the table? Can you have um, macaroni and cheese on the table? Can you have spinach on the table? Can you have collard green on the table? And so you might want to be creative and you might want to set a table for the feast of the Passover and you want to include all these other things that you want to include. But rest assured, the Bible did not tell you that you should. So if you include all these other things on the table, that is on you. That's not biblical. I rest my case right there. Because the Lord already stated what would be on the table. And so the Lord God now says in verse 15... Seven days shall he eat unleavened bread. Even the first day he shall uh, put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread uh, from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So now that becomes, there's a law now. There's a law now that's, uh, governs the unleavened bread eating the time of unleavened bread there is a law now that governs it that if you don't observe this law you could be put to death because now the law is, uh, is saying to you that if you are found if in your home, you are found with leavened bread and you do not partake of unleavened bread for uh, seven days. You 
and your household can be brought out to be punished and the punishment would be death. And so this is the law that is a law. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Okay? Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. So the command is that you must put away leaven out of your house. Any bread that is made with yeast, salt, and pepper, anything else, get it out of your house, clean out your house, and all you must have is unleavened bread. But if we find out, if someone reports you and you are caught, then you are subjected to be put to death. I hope you understand that. All right. So therefore, as we move forward now, we want to come to today's day of what we call the Lord's Supper. But before we do so, let us look at what the leaven and the unleavened represents here. Why would God tell them that they must eat unleavened bread? Why would God tell them now that they must have bitter herbs on the table to eat? Why would God instruct them to do all of these things in this way? So, number one, if you are not protected by the blood of the Lamb, the dead angel that passed through, which is God who allowed the dead angel to pass through. And so, that's where the Bible now talks about where God says that I'm going to pass through Egypt and I'm going to smite all the firstborn. So this is how the Lord did it. The Lord did it by using a dead angel. The Lord did all of this destruction by allowing an angel of death to pass through the land and the angel of death must only kill or destroy the firstborn of any family that does not have the blood upon their door that's the command death will ensue because they are not protected so now it brings us to the unleavened the unleavened is something that represents purity there is no yeast in the flour in the wheat or the barley wheat that is made to bake this bread. There's no yeast. There's no salt. There's nothing to contaminate it. And therefore the unleavened represents, the unleavened bread represents the son of God. The unleavened bread would now represent the son of God. The bitter herbs would now represent the trials and tribulations that Jesus Christ would go through for you and me. The bitter herb represents the time when he was on the cross and he says, I thirst, and they gave him vinegar to drink and bitter and gall or whatever else it is. They dipped it and gave it to him to drink. The bitter Ness of the cross, the suffering of the cross, the hardship of the cross. The blood of the Lamb is the blood that Jesus Christ would shed for you and me when they whipped him, when they break or broke his skin, when he was on the cross. The crown of thorn upon his head. The blood of Jesus Christ was spilled for you and for me. Are you following with me somebody? Glory to God. So we see here where 
as we fast forward, the Passover was a shadow of things to come. The Passover was pointing to Jesus Christ. The Passover lamb was pointing to Jesus Christ. So there we understand now what the Passover represents. And then we also must understand here that there was an ordinance and a law that was now instituted here. A memorial, verse uh, 14. Not just a memorial, but a memorial with feast. Not just a memorial with feast. But a memorial with feast that must last throughout the generation. Not just a memorial with a feast that will last throughout the generation. But it now would be called a feast of ordinance. <clears throat> so now the reason why it's now given that feast of ordinance is to bring us to the part, to the part or the place where the word of God explained to us that Jesus Christ brought in out the ordinance. Not only that, we need to see here that the law here said that you must die if you are found with sin, which is leaven in your household. So in other words, I'm transitioned now to a spiritual map, to a spiritual interpretation a spiritual ex explanation using the physical using the natural to transition now to what is spiritual so the the, the unleavened mean that your body has now become <clears throat> without sin your body is now has now uh become a body without sin and the only body that was a body without sin was Jesus Christ. Not so much you. But then the word of God encourages us that we must clean out. We must uh, clean out our body. That we be not leavened. We must purge out the leaven out of our body. Referring to that we must uh, purge out the sin. Stop doing the wrong. And that's a transition now into the New Testament. So um, let's see if I can get any, if there anyone who has a question, a comment that you would like to give. And I, I know uh, Mother Sterling, uh, let me open, uh, open my, um, Missionary Sterling line. Maybe she has a comment, mm -hmm. maybe a question. Um, I know Sister... <laughs> All right, she said no. All right, and so far we good. All right, bless the Lord. Um, how about you, Mother Francis? Mother Francis, have a you? Do you have a question, a comment that you would like to yes. say or give at this time, my sister? No, all right, Mother Francis, all is well. You good? Okay, bless you. All right, all right, all right, thank you so much. All right, Sister Merlin, how about you, Sister Merlin? You have a question, a comment, Sister Merlin? Yes. All right. He said, she says, no, Pastor, all right, so you're good. You are right, good, bless you. Okay, amen, bless the Lord. All right, how about you, um, Sister Royce? Do you have a question, a comment? You, all, you you understand what's going on here? Sister Royce, okay. All right. Mm. Yeah, yes. Mm. You're good. All right, all right. She's good. Mm. Okay, wonderful. So now let's transition over to the New Testament. How about you, anyone in the boys' family? Praise Lord and bless the Lord. Let's transition to Ma where is it? Ma is, is it Matthew? Yes, you with you with you understand and you got it so far. All right, so let's let's transition now to the New Testament. How did we get to where we are today? That we don't 
partake of the Passover anymore. Because there are some today who still keep the Passover. There are some today who still keep the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Not only that there are some today who does that, but the time period where the Feast of the Unleavened Bread for seventh day, we see where Easter is set up to, um, to, to come up large itself in terms of people doing what we call Lent, the week of Lent. When they do the week of Lent, it is actually trying to, uh, what's the right word to say, where they have the Feast of the Unleavened Bread that week where they, 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 the Lent week is somewhat um, synchronized with the Feast of Unleavened or... From the Feast of Unleavened, they will have what you call Lent, where they will only eat fish. They will have no meat or something like that. So you see where paganism is coming into play, uh, the apostasite of the church, where paganism has slipped into the church and they use the things of God or the things of the Bible to camouflage what they have done. But if you don't study to show yourself approved, you will not spot and see these things that they have done. And this and these things or what they have done is also what is called the mark of the beast or part of mar the mark of the beast because it is their doctrine. It's a doctrine of Babylon. And you have to now be careful and to understand what are the doctrines of Babylon because the doctrines of Babylon is an identity, all right? And the, uh, the, when you talk about the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast is an identity. And, and so how do we identify who you are, how we identify those who are of the false church? How do we identify those who are not for Christ and of Christ? Even though some of them might be called Christians or some of them might profess that they are for Christ and with Christ. But yet their, their doctrines are not what Christ teaches. So bear in mind when we talk about the atonement, bear in mind when we talk about the ordinances, Bear in mind when we talk about debt, that you must die if you are found guilty. Keep that in mind. Bear in mind also memorial. Keep that in mind. And bear in mind the things that would be on the table. So let us bear all those things in mind. And let's move forward now to the first recollection of uh, the institution of the Lord's Supper. So let's go to Matthew and let us look at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 is one of the places. So when we look at Matthew chapter 26, we're going to see uh, a few things here. All right, Matthew chapter 26. Now, here's, a, here's something interesting that, that happens today. Today, this happens today. <clears throat> this happens today. And uh, I want you to think about it, visualize it. If you are fasting, or when you are fasting, can you have commun communion, or can you take the Lord's Supper 
or can you eat of his blood his body and drink of his blood you are fasting can you do that anyone um let me see who should i ask <laughs> who should i ask um anyone 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 oh boy yeah mother sterling uh missionary sterling so okay so we are fasting and um <clears throat> and and we are fasting we are abstaining from food from from drink and whatever you might fast and you might do a water fast where you only drink fast and but you're not eating so you are fasting can you then take communion or the lord's supper let's say the lord's supper is scheduled and you are fasting while the lord's supper is scheduled can you still take the Lord's Supper? Fast, fasting, taking the Lord's Supper in a fasting. Yeah. Wow, if, wow, you should have, uh, I think Paul, <laughs> we tried to go back what? here. So Paul, <coughs> tell us that everyone should eat up their house before they come to the table. Okay. And All right. they come to the table. Yeah, okay, good answer. You are right. That's a, I, I like that answer. It's a good answer right there. Amen. So, uh, all right. So, so um, here it is, brothers and sisters. Um, not to be critical. I, I, I mean, I, I did not, you know, go on the the platform to be critical. But here it is that there were a group of people who were supposed to be. Fasting, ending the fast. Today would be the end of the fast. But yet, they did not break the fast, but they were having communion. They were having what is called communion. How could that be? I, I, I think I was like, wow. Uh, I don't think that was um, in line with the words of God. I don't believe that that was in line with the word of God. You cannot have a communion while you are fasting it just don't make no sense how could that be but then again this is what ministers are doing out there they are leading god's people astray and i cannot sit silent on this i cannot sit silent now a next thing can you Give communion to the dead. How can you have a, 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 a burial service or a funeral service and at the funeral service you are doing communion? Are you doing communion for the living or is that you're doing communion for the dead? You are definitely doing communion for the dead which is not in line with the word of God. How can these things be? And that's why the word of God says that we must try the spirit because not every spirit is of God. And the Bible said we must search the scripture for in them we think we have life. So let's look at the transition of the Passover into what is called the Lord's Supper. Romans, uh, not Romans, but Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Read for me, um, Sister Sister Marilyn, I just opened your line. Read for me, Matthew 26 from verse, from verse 20. A matter of fact, start from verse 17. Matthew 22 from verse 17. Matthew 26. Oh, yeah. It's on verse 17. Yes. Okay. Now the first day of the feast of unleaved Ben Burke, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, Where will thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And Jesus and he said, Go into the city, such a man, 
and say unto him, The master said, My time is at hand. I will keep thy keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the Stephen was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did it, he said, he said, as he sat down with them, all on. Mm -hmm. as, as they, as yeah. they did eat, verse 21, yeah. And he, and they said, it, he said, verily, and he said that, did it, he said, verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowfully, and began, every one of them moved to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Mm -hmm. And he answered and said, he that dipped his hand with me, in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man went as it is written of him. But who unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed okay. it had been good for that man mm -hmm. if he had not been born? Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, the word said, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Eat, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks mm -hmm. and gave it to him, the all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this food of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. All right, stop and there, stop there. All right, so you can stop there. Thank you so much. All right, we, 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 we got that. Amen. Praise God. Let me ask a uh, missionary to then now read um, Mark 14. Let's go to Mark 14, 17. All right, missionary Sterling, Mark 14, 17. And I'm going to ask one of, the young, one of the young boys to look up Luke 22. Look for Luke 22 and hold on to that for me. But uh, missionary, go to... Um, Matthew 14, 17, and then we're going to ask one of the, uh, somebody from the boy's family to read Luke. But let's go to Mark 14 first. Mark 14, verse 17. All right, let's go there. Uh, so let's open your line, Missionary Sterling, so you could read that for me. Mark 14, yeah. And in the evening, and in the evening, cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily, I say unto you, one of, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. Mm -hmm. And they began to be circled and to say unto me, one of, one of thy one, it is I. And another said, it is I, and he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that did Depart. that did, did with me in the ditch. The Son of Man indeed goes it as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of man is betrayed good good were it mm -hmm. for that man if he had never been born mm -hmm. as they did eat jesus took bread 
and bless and break it and gave to them that and gave to them and said mm -hmm. take take eat this is my body and he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and they all drink of it mm -hmm. and said unto them this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for men. Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of, of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. All right, stop right there. I will drink. No more. Now we gotta. I gotta mark that because I have a point that somebody said something today that I want to address. Um, uh, um, I, may, I don't know. Yeah, twenty-five. Stop right there. That's good. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So let's go over. Let's see. I don't know. One of the boys will read for me. Let me open three zero four five line. Oh, all right, Sister Carol going to read. Let me see if I can um, get to Luke. What I said, Luke what? Luke, 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 Luke uh, 22, verse 14. Let's see what Luke 22, verse 14 is saying. Luke 22, verse 14. Luke 22. Those who are, yeah, Luke 22. Verse 14, what it says. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. All right, read down, read on, read on. Repeat it or keep going? Go, keep going, keep going. <laughs> and he said unto them, with desire... Have I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the, the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave them and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given unto you, which is given mm -hmm. for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Mm -hmm. But behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with is with me on the table. Mm -hmm. And truly, the Son of Man goeth, and it is with, and it is what, and it as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he, he is betrayed. betrayed. Stop right there. Amen. Wonderful. Glory, glory be to God. That's right. Wow, all right. So we see here in uh, several verses and several reading, all right, where Jesus Christ now transitioned from the Passover to uh what we call the Lord's Supper. How do we know that? We know that by reading now verses, all right, my brother who just read, who just read in Luke. I want you to go now to verse uh, 1 of Luke 22. Verse 1 of Luke 22 and, um, and read that verse for us. Verse one, yeah, brother, uh, brother boys, yeah, go back, go back again. Hello. Luke 
one. Yeah, verse one. Yeah. Now the feast of now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Good. Stop there. Stop there. Now, now read verse seven. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. Mm -hmm. All right. Stop there. Good. Good. So uh, we see now the time. We see the time. We see that 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 the time period. Are, are you seeing what I'm saying? The, the time period now. Uh, we had someone who read uh, Mark. Uh, who read Mark? We want to go now to Mark as it was. 14. And we want to go to verse 1. Right? I think that was um, Missionary Sterling. You read Mark. So let's go to Mark 14 verse 1. Mark 14, verse 1. 1 and 2, yeah, after, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. uh, after two days was the feast of the Passover, and of the unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes thought how they might take him by cross and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, let there be an uproar of, of the, the people. people. Stop there. All right, good. Okay, wonderful. Unless there be an uproar of the people. So, so we see um, from the reading uh, that the time period was already set. The time period was already set when Jesus Christ um, instituted the Lord's Supper, where we transition now from Passover to the Lord's Supper. So number one, we see in Matthew, where as um, Sister Merlin so eloquently read as well, that and it came to pass, Matthew 26, right? Um, Matthew 26. We read the preparation of the Passover. So the time now, now the, the uh, if you go back to Matthew 26 and verse 17 with me, okay? It says in verse 17, and the first day of the feast of unleavened bread. <clears throat> when was the unleavened bread? The unleavened bread, the, the feast of the unleavened bread was to take place right after the Passover. So they would have the Passover and then the next day they would um, begin to have the feast of the unleavened bread for seven days. Now the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, the disciple came to Jesus saying unto him, where will thou, where will thou that we prepare for to eat the Passover? So what I'm seeing here is that during this time, the feast of the unleavened bread and the Passover was just around the same time. Or it, it was taking place within the same month. It was taking place within the same month. So, uh, Jesus Christ now was having the Passover supper because the preparation is now made and they have the space and the room in which they will sit and eat. And so, uh, verse 19 says that the disciple did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. 
All right. Verse 20. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. So it was in the evening that Jesus Christ sat down to eat the Passover. He sat down with his disciples to eat the Passover for the last time. And verily I say unto you, Jesus now start to explain to them that one of them would betray him. That's during the time now when they are, are eating the Passover. So now, now on the table was unleavened bread. On the table was the bitter herbs. And on the table they had uh, the fruit of the vine, something to drink. All right. Now, <clears throat> I can go on and on with, with a few questions, but I don't want to um, confuse you in any way possible. Jesus Christ knew that he would die shortly after this event. So he now take the opportunity to institute the Lord's Supper. How did he institute the Lord's Supper? It says, as they were eating Jesus, as they were eating, they who, was it simply the disciples alone were eating? Or is it that they including Jesus Christ? So as soon as they were all eating, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciple and told him to eat. Then he did the same thing with the drink. He blessed it and he gave it to them to drink. Now he said unto them also <clears throat> that I would not drink. So let's be specific now. But I say unto you in verse 29. I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Why was there drink on the table is the question I want to ask. Why was there drink on the table when they do the Passover in the beginning I didn't read in Exodus where drink was on the table. So now I'm asking, how could drink be on the table now? Well, <clears throat> I don't have an answer unless I go and do some more studying, but I don't have an answer why a cup of fruit of the vine or something to drink would be on the table. I can account for the bitter herbs. I can account for the unleavened bread and I can account for the lamb. But I cannot account for the drink which Jesus Christ blessed and gave it to them to drink. All right, well... Let me leave it alone until I get some answer. Unless someone on the line might have an answer that can help me out with. I, I don't have one. But, all right. So, also I said in my statements that there seems to be a period where it is called for the unleavened bread the feast of the unleavened bread so let me look and try to get some more understanding at luke chapter 22 if i can get some understanding in luke chapter 22 and verse 1 which says now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh which is called the passover all right
Verse 7 says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. All right, so now I get the understanding of the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Now I get the understanding now. And let's go back to Exodus to get the full clarity of the scripture. Let's go back to Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. Let's go back to Exodus. All right. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 12. Verse 1 and 2. Let's look at verse 2. The month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So we here establish the month. The first month of the year, which is Ab Abib. Abib is the biblical month of the year, the first month of the year. Now let's look at the date. In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. So they will have the, the, the tenth day, they will have the lamb. And then now let's look at what it says next. After you have the lamb. Your lamb. Verse 5. Verse 6 rather. Let's look at verse 6. And you shall keep. <clears throat> keep it the lamb. Until the 14th day. Of the same month. And. The 14th day in the evening. You shall kill it. So let's see now. Verse 6 tells you that. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So it will be killed on the 14th day. Now let's look at the scripture that talks about the unleavened bread. Let's look at the scripture that talks about the unleavened bread. When would the unleavened bread be? All right. Exodus 12 and verse 18 Exodus 12 and verse 18. In the first month of the 14th day of the month at Evelyn. At Eve. E-V-E-N means Evelyn. In the first month, which is Abib, on the 14th day, the day that the lamb would be killed and eaten. You shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month. At evening you shall eat it. So you're going to eat it until the twenty-first day of the month. So you're going to start on the fourteenth day and you're going to eat it until the twenty, what did it say? Until one, uh, yeah, one and twenty, which is the twenty-first. So one and 20th day means the 21st. And then it says, Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. So now we get the understanding that it was the 14th day of the month that the disciples said to Jesus, Where shall we eat the Passover? So Exodus 12 coincide. And it backs up Matthew 26 and verse 17. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was the 14th day of the first month. On that day, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Where shall we prepare the Passover? So... The Passover now would be eaten on that particular evening. There's no changes being done to the time. No changes being done to the month. No changes. None whatsoever. 
except that the Lord God says this Passover should be done from generation to generation. So which meaning while Jesus Christ was alive, all throughout his 33 years that he was on earth, he kept the feast of the Passover. From a child unto his adult age, he kept the feast of the Passover until this particular time, he also kept the feast of the Passover. Now that he was going to die to be to replace that lamb, because the following year they would not be required to have a lamb anymore, because now Jesus will take the place of the lamb. So I heard someone said, and I'm going to say it again. Someone was talking and doing whatever they were doing. And they said that Jesus Christ did not partake. So we have to be careful now. What is it that Jesus Christ did not partake of? And we have to be careful and we have to be precise and we have to be clear and we have to be correct. What is it that Jesus Christ did not partake of? Was it the Passover he did not partake of? Or was it the Lord's Supper that he instituted he did not partake of? So now we come to the, the, the conclusion and the, the junction and the understanding that Jesus Christ, when they prepare the place for the Passover, number one, he was there. Number two, he was sitting at the table. Number three, the Bible says what? They did eat. Verse 21. And they did eat. He said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. So, should you conclude that it was they who were eating the disciples, or it was all of them who were eating? So, how do we know the truth? How do we know which is the truth? All right, this is how we know what we are dealing with. Let's look at verse 26. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. As we looked at Mark 14, as we look at Luke 12, I mean Luke 22, we are going to visit those um, scriptures again. But first, let us look at Matthew. Matthew 26. And they, the, and, and, and here again it says that. And as they were eating, as they who were eating, was it all of them? Or was it just the disciple? And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. And break it and gave it to his disciple and said, take eat, this is my body. Right here we see Jesus Christ blessed the bread, break the bread and gave it to his disciples and says, eat, this is my body. Therefore, this is suggesting that Jesus Christ did not eat of that bread at that moment. The bread that Jesus Christ picked up and blessed and broke and gave to his disciples, Jesus Christ did not eat of that bread. Because he says, this is my body. So he would not eat of his own body. So it is wise to say that he gave the bread to them and say, this is my body, you must eat. Not only that he did that, which gave them the bread and said they must eat, which he did not eat of at that particular time. That doesn't mean that Jesus Christ did not eat before he did this. There's no scripture that shows us that Jesus Christ did not eat before he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. The scripture shows that he was participating in the Passover up until this point where he break the bread and gave it to his disciples. After they ate, he did a next thing. 
he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and saying, drink ye all of it. In order for Jesus Christ to do that, there had to be drink on the table. The drink on the table now should and would represent what? Because at this junction, they were not taking the blood of the lamb and putting on door posts. When they killed the lamb and drained the blood from the lamb, they were not taking the blood in a basin, uh, from a basin that they drained the blood in and were striking it on door posts anymore. They were not doing that. So therefore, the drink now on the table had to now represent something. <laughs> oh boy, I, Lord, I, please bless me, Lord. Bless me with this understanding. Bless me with this teaching. Bless me, bless me, Lord. Now that they are drinking of what's in the cup, Jesus said to them, this is my blood of the New Testament. Therefore, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. So Jesus Christ was not going to drink from that cup because that was supposed to be his blood and he would not drink from the cup. He's not going to drink his own blood. He don't need to drink his own blood for remission of sin. Jesus Christ did not eat, need to eat his own body. His body would be broken for you and for me. Not for him. Not for himself. So now that he has instituted the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Supper is for us today. The Lord's Supper came because of the Passover. And so Jesus Christ now said to them in verse 29, I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. He tells us right here that this is the fruit of the vine, unfermented, unfermented, unfermented. This is not a fermented wine. This is a fruit of the vine unfermented unfermented it's not cure it was not put down for months or years and it become fermented where it is now um becoming a form of liquor or wine in the form of liquor or wine in the form of alcohol or wine in the form of where it has intoxication And he says, that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Now, why would the statement says, when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom? So we have to understand the word of God in context. And we have to also understand the Greek in order to get the full explanation. Remember that the Bible was written by... Um, Kings James, the was it the second or, or Kings James? And a matter of fact, Kings James gave uh, the authority to the poet or to um, what is name again? That poet. Oh boy, come on, come on, Shakespeare. Because we call we know him as, as 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 Shakespeare, and that's why the Bible is written in Old English because Shakespeare used poetic terms and so forth. But then when we go back to the Greek, we'll understand a little different. Now, to get a little more understanding of, of the word here, we can go to the other Gospels. We can go to Mark. Let's get some more understanding. Mark 17. Let's go to Mark 17 and get some more understanding of the word here. So Jesus Christ himself really did not partake of the... Um, the Lord's Supper as we know it as today, because he 
was going to be the lamb that would be slain to eliminate the Passover. And he would be the last. Um, so he was slain not the night of the Passover. We got to understand that also. Jesus Christ was not crucified the night of the Passover. Well, that's another thing to another thing to look at. All right. Jesus Christ was not crucified the night of the Passover. The night of the Passover, he was having Passover with his disciples. He was having unleavened bread, the feast of the unleavened bread, which started also the 14th, which was the night of the Passover lamb. All right, so let's go to Mark chapter 14 and get some more understanding. Mark chapter 14 verse 1 says, after two days, meaning after the, the, the conclusion of the transaction that took place in chapter 13. All right. Two days. After two days was the feast of the Passover. So in, in two days time, the feast of the Passover will begin and also of the unleavened bread. During this time now, the chief priests and the scribes sought to do what they must to put him to death. Okay? Then when we go to verse... Where is it? 12. Now when we go to Mark chapter 14, verse 12. And the first day of unleavened bread. Here it is. The first day of unleavened bread. When was the first day of unleavened bread? The first day of unleavened bread was what? The 14th of the first month. When? The 14th of the first month. When was unleavened bread be started and must be it and must be um, observed? In the evening, the unleavened bread, the feast must be done when? In the evening. When was the lamb to be killed? The 14th. When? In the evening. When was it to be eaten? In the evening. All of these things were to be done in the evening, not in the day. So if you are having the Lord's Supper in the daytime, you are not in line with the word of God. You are not in accordance with the word of God. If you, as a minister out there, hearing the sound of my voice, listening to me, read the scripture for yourself. Exodus. Go back to Exodus. It was the evening, not the midday and not the morning. Read the word of God for yourself again. If you are a minister and you are going, uh, giving communion, during the daytime, during the morning time, you are not in line with the word of God. And if you're a child of God who understand the word of God and you're hearing the sound of my voice and your minister is doing that, you are not obligated to take the Lord's Supper because you want to be in obedience to your minister. You rather to obey God than man. And if your minister is in error, he's going to lead you to where? Okay, I won't even say the word. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, see, we see then again, the first day of unleavened bread, they killed the Passover, and it was in the evening. His disciples said unto him, Wherewith thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover, where are we going to eat the Passover? Where are we going to have the Passover feast? And he told them what to do. So we see the time frame again. All right. Okay. Verse 17. And in the evening, he cometh with the twelve. Once again, when in the evening... Not in the morning, not in the afternoon, but in the evening. That's the word of God. 
and they sat and did eat and they sat and did eat they who again is it they jesus christ is it they without jesus christ sat and eat was jesus christ eating with his disciple when they sat down to eat or was it that they were eating and jesus christ was just watching or talking to them what do you believe well we might believe something but what does the word of God say? Let us go according to the word of God. Not according to our belief. Not according to our interpretation. And not according to our opinion. But let's go according to the word of God. If the word of God says that they sat and eat. We must understood that this is inclusive. That they were all sitting down and eating. And then Jesus says, truly I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. So the word of God is telling you that Jesus Christ was eating with them at this particular moment. So he said, one of you that eateth with me shall betray me. This is telling you that Jesus Christ was eating with them. And he answered, verse um, uh, 20, well, if you're with me, verse 20, if you're with me, more facts, more proof. And he answered and said unto them, if, as a matter of fact, not if, but it, oh Lord, put your glasses on, brother. <laughs> my eyes, I'm, 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 I'm reading the word without my glasses, but um, that's all right. I don't so much like keeping my glasses on all the time too long but it is one of the 12 that dip it with me in the dish now why would jesus christ say that if he was not eating one of the 12 that dip it with me so that means jesus christ was dipping in the dish of bitter herbs he was dipping in the sap he was dipping the bread in the sap the unleavened bread he was dipping it in the sap and he was eating with them And so Jesus Christ says that one of the 12 that dip it with me in the dish would be the one that would betray me. And then now we move down to verse 22 where Jesus did something again. And as they did eat, meaning that they were already in the process of eating, as they did eat, they, while they were eating, while they were having supper, while they were having dinner, while they were having the Passover meal, while they were having the Passover lamb, while they were eating, Jesus now took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. At that particular time, Jesus Christ did not eat when he did that. He took the bread, he baked, break it, he gave it to the, he gave thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Jesus Christ did not eat at that moment when he gave it to them. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drink of it. And he said unto them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Jesus Christ's blood would not be shed for him, Jesus Christ. It would be shed for who? Many. And that's why he said now, I will, verse 25, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So in other words. During the Passover. He was already eating and drinking. During the Passover meal. That, that, that he was having with them originally. But then he stopped. And he broke bread. And he blessed it. And gave it to them. After he did that. He took the fruit of the vine. That was in whatever container. Or cup that they were 
they were using or drinking from, and he blessed it, gave it to them and tell them drink and said, I will not drink anymore. I will not drink until. I drink it new in the kingdom of God. I hope I'm making sense to somebody. Um, I mean, we can go over to Luke as well as we conclude with Luke. Let's go over to Luke and conclude as the disciples of Jesus Christ who then later on transition to be apostles as they give their recollection of what trans transacted or what took place or what transpired before Jesus Christ was crucified and buried and then ascended up into heaven. They give their recollection of what transacted, what transpired, what took place. And so they did so according as the Holy Spirit of God gave them utterance. As the Holy Spirit of God brought back to their remembrance what they must put on paper. And therefore you and I have it today. Let us not speculate. Let us not opinionate. Let us not come to our own conclusion of our own fleshy mind. But let us allow the Spirit of God to lead us and to teach us. Now let's look at the transition again of the Passover into what is called today the Lord's Supper which many of you would consider to be communion. You would call it communion. Let's go now to Luke chapter 22. As we conclude it right here, we're wrapping it up now. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh. That means it's not here yet, but it's drawing nigh. Which is called the Passover. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is also called the Passover because on the Passover table, there was, the fee, there was the unleavened bread. And at that particular night, they started eating unleavened bread for seven days, which means they count that night. That night, the 14th of the Passover, the unleavened bread was on the table as well. And then the feast of unleavened bread, which would be that they would eat unleavened bread on their table would for seven days, only in the evening would begin. Now, when I say only in the evening, I'm not trying to say to you that, okay, they didn't eat unleavened bread during the morning for breakfast or for whatever. If they have done that, it, they, there's no argument with that that's all right but the feast of unleavened bread began in the evening and the bible in, in in exodus tell them that they must make sure they eat unleavened bread in the evening so if they want to eat unleavened bread throughout the day when the evening come they better make sure they eat unleavened bread and not skip but anyway that's uh something for you to ponder on all right so there we have it. Verse 7. Verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread. Okay, this is Luke chapter 22, verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. Y'all get that now? Verse 7. The Passover must be killed on the day of unleavened bread. And verse 8 now. And he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. That who? We may eat. That, that who? We may eat. Not you may eat. But that what? We may eat. Including himself. Y'all get that? That's verse 8. <clears throat> verse 8. 
verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. He sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Now, the word apostle is used here because the word of God was written after Jesus Christ ascended to heaven. At this time, when Jesus Christ sat down with them, they were disciples, his disciples at that time. However, when Jesus Christ ascended, they were now, they now transitioned to be apostles. They were now called apostles. And therefore, when the word is written, the term 12 apostle is now included to describe them. So it's not that they were apostles then. I mean, you could argue with me, give and take. I mean, you know, you could argue, give and take, but they were the only ones who were called apostles at the time when apostleship was being bestowed upon God's disciples. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now, here it is now. Very interesting part, you know, because we got to be careful now and be in, 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 um, in a line with the words of God. Watch this now. This is very key. With desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not anymore eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Now, watch this, brethren. We got to be careful and cannot jump to conclusion that Jesus Christ says, um, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. But then he goes on to say that, I say unto you, I will not anymore eat thereof. Why would Jesus Christ then say, I will not anymore eat thereof? Jesus Christ knew what he was talking about. So why would then Jesus Christ say here, okay, I desire to eat the Passover with you before I suffer because he knew that he was going to suffer and he knew that they are getting ready to eat the Passover. So is he saying to them that, uh, okay, I desire to eat it with you, but I'm going to watch you eat. I'm going to watch you eat and I will not eat of the Passover anymore until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ was talking about the Lord's Supper here. He was talking about the transition from the Passover to the Lord's Supper. So that's what Jesus Christ was saying here. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this. Because that's what he was about to do. And that's why he was explaining to them that, listen, I desire to continue to eat with you and all of that stuff. But, um, you know, unfortunately, I'm not going to do this anymore with you after this last um, Passover that we are eating together because I'm, I'm transitioning from Passover to Lord's Supper now because guess what? You will not be having Passover as Passover was or is this time would be the last time that you all will be having Passover with the, the lamb that you kill in the evening and, 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 and bitter herbs and all of that. And he took the, 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 the uh, here it says, and he took the cup and gave thanks. So this, this disciple here tells you that he took the cup first. While the other two disciples told you that he broke the bread first. This disciple here in Luke record that. Okay. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and drink. Oh uh, no. And divide it among themselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. So we see clearly that Jesus Christ was talking about 
the Lord's Supper that he will not be participating or taking the drink or drink, eating the bread. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. All right. There we have it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, O oh God. Woo! Anyone, anyone wish to open their lines? Talk to me, somebody. Anyone? Star six and what you have to say because <laughs> we don't have to slay the lamb anymore. Amen. Oh, Karen. This is Sister Carol. Yes. Wait, all right, well, hold on. Somebody's hold on, Sister Merlin. Um, uh, Missionary Sterling, somebody is talking, but she's she's on the other platform. Yeah, go ahead, my sister. Yeah, I was saying the reason I think that the reason why the cup was on the table with the vine juice, I mean, I, I believe it's grape juice, but the um, is because he knew he was going to institute. The Lord's Supper after eating the Passover with them. And I believe on the table, once they started with the unleavened bread, it was unleavened bread that was on the table only because during the Passover, no other type of bread needed to be, should be on the table. So You're right. that's why I am, um, that's why when we take the Lord's Supper now, it is unleavened bread that we take, mm -hmm. not wafers, mm -hmm. not matzah, I mean, in my opinion, but it's the unleavened. <laughs> and they make it so simple that, you know, you can't, if you can't get all these ingredients, if you, if you can't get flour, you can't make the, um, the unleavened bread. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You use the wheat. Use a, you use the wheat, the um, whatever, and make the unleavened bread. All right, good. Um, okay, who 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 we had next? Was it um, um, sister 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 Merlin? Were you next? And then we have Mother Stern. Yeah, then we have. I was saying that the pastor, for instance, um, when you are uh, at church and they're gonna give um the Lord's supper. Um, what about if the church not going to keep again until um in the week and they give you a lot of supper like in the in the um like call it in the afternoon then go down over the service and then give you the last supper. Is it not right? No. It's not right. Okay. They have to make okay. the right they have to make the right preparation like what Jesus did. Oh, they are not in line. They are not in line with the word of God. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So I suppose I'll give it in the morning or in the afternoon, in the evening. When I used to go to church in Jamaica, they always give it like when service over and they when go back to church like six o'clock. Six seven o'clock when they're gonna they have that um large supper um and wash cook. <laughs> but up here they don't do wash cook. Yeah, they do. They 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 they, 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 they are churches who that do. Um, we do the Church of God Seventh Day. We uh we do that. We we do that. Um. All right, we do that. Okay, missionary, what you got now? I um uh what if I miss it? I was uh uh supper was I don't know, it looked like I miss it. But to me when 
For I say unto you, I, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine un, until the kingdom of God shall come. And one another scripture, boy. let me see. To me, you're saying that he did not drink with them, but I think it, they all drink. I think they all drink. Uh, yeah. I missed something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you so missed something. I, yeah, you missed something because you are saying you think. Yeah. But but I'm looking at the word. Read. Hold on. Give me a minute. And he took bread and gave thanks. And Which scripture? Tell us where you're. Hold on. Hold on. Tell us where you're reading from. I'm reading from St. Luke chapter. Okay. 22. Okay. I'm looking at the ninth verse. Okay. I'm trying to proper. Okay. Make I go the 19th verse. I see. Yeah. And he took and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body. Yeah. Right? Which is given for you. This this to do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also, I took the cup after supper, after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my, in my blood, which is shed for you. But the whole, the, no, 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 that's not this, uh, anyway, behold the hands of him, okay, that, Tree me that thing. That's not the part I was looking for. And he said, so that's not that part I was looking for. I was looking for the part where he says, I had it, I don't know, I miss it. And he took the cup. If I say unto you, I, okay, I, for I say unto you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until. The kingdom of God shall come. You see, to me, to me, maybe I look at it different that he drink with them. When I say, for I say unto you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Maybe I start with you, you, okay, so you got to go, the one, the scripture that you want is Mark 14, and that's why I'm trying to tell you that the, 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 the disciples, they are recording the same event, but they are recording it, some of them, in a little different with the word, the wording is a little different. What you are reading over and over, if you read it and hear yourself, read it and listen to yourself, that the Lord is saying to you and to us and to everybody, he's saying, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine. He's saying, I will not drink. Let me go back. Let me go back. Now, he's just saying that over and over in Luke 22. <laughs> Luke 22, he's saying it over and over. I will not drink. Okay, okay, I see the NOT. So he, he said, I will not drink. He didn't say, I will not drink again. That's not what it said. But if you look at Mark 14, carefully now, and you look at okay, verse... I'm yeah, looking Mark. at Luke. Oh, hold on. Mark 14. What verse now? 20. 24. Mark 14, 24. 14. 22. Okay, And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for men. Verily I say unto you, I will, I will drink. I will. No yes, this is verse was looking like that. I will drink no more 
up the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This was the verse I was looking at. <coughs> I will drink no and all more of the fruit of the vine. But over there the, the verse says something kind of different. So what that first verse said not in in um Mark Luke said not understand yeah i understand but the expert and, and one say and one and, and this one said no more different no more yeah okay yes, this one says drink no more right the fruit of wine until that day that i drink in drink it new in the kingdom of god right right and then now uh, uh, another disciple says that he gave he gave them to drink first. First, the disciple says in 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 Luke twenty two that um, he, he he take the cup he take the cup and gave them to drink first. You see that Luke twenty two also tell show you the others talk about the, the, the bread first but Luke talk about the drink first you see it doesn't matter which, it doesn't <laughs> matter which side whether I bless the bread first or the drink we're talking about uh, uh, with you and it's the, it's the new in the new kingdom that's what we're okay. talking about well, well I brought that up to show you that the, the 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 disciples might give the recollection a little different not 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 saying that the the incident or the event never took place but for some people it is important the order in which it was done while for others it's not important the order so with that said it's the same thing now we are saying that one of the disciples, disciple Mark, said that until that day I drink it new. Or first he said, truly I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the right. vine. When he, right. when he said that, when he said that is a time at which he... <laughs> Bless the, the the cup or the drink in the cup, and gave it to them. So mm -hmm. he 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 did not he, he he was drinking before he was drinking and eating and everything else before, up until this point when he blessed and gave it to them, and he told him that I will not be drinking anymore. Guys, to me it's the same to me it's the same wine same drink that was uh, on the table yes 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 it it's the same, same this yes yeah. yes it's, it's, it is the same drink yes it is the same fruit of the vine but it's different <laughs> moments it's different moments dinner okay, it took okay. And that is the moment when he institutes mm -hmm. the new God's mm -hmm. supper. Not mm -hmm. Passover, not the Passover food like what you do anymore. Mm -hmm. But in, in institute the new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see, so we eat as we home first. And mm -hmm. when we come to the table, it's just the drink and the bread. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that's that all that we should eat home mm -hmm. and don't come to the table mm -hmm. to come and eat to pull okay. our stomach. So uh -huh. we eat at home first, then we come to the table. Right. Right. So it's 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 no more bitter herbs on the table. It's right. no more bitter herbs on the table. People right. who, who people who are setting a table and we set table, we put fruits, we put this, we put that. 
We put everything, but we don't put no bitter herbs. We put everything else, but hold on. Uh, if we, we, we put everything that we want to put, but we don't put bitter herbs and all of those other stuff. We are still not, we are still not in, 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 in line with the word of God. We are just simply doing what, we are just simply doing what we believe we should do. Right. Because then, look at it another way. Then it says, he rise from supper. That's another one. Rise from supper and lay his garment aside. Took the towel, wrapped around his waist, started to begin to wash his disciples' feet. Mm. Wow. You see? 